Hello, I'm Maria Kunilovskaya. I'm happy to present the results of our study on behalf of my colleagues from the University of Zaland and the University of Wolverhampton. This study compares literary translations into Russian from 11 source languages to fiction originally authored in Russian. This comparison reveals systematic differences between translations and non-translations known as translationese. Translationese studies has developed into an important subfield within empirical translation studies. It is focused on explaining the specificity of translations, which makes them, some say, a special target language variety. 30 years of research yielded ample evidence that translations always deviate from non-translations. The key concept underpinning the research in this area is translationese. It is usually defined as a set of statistical features which make translations distinct from comparable non-translations. The existence of translationese is explained by the specificity of translation as a text production activity and a communicative process. Um, during translation, two language systems are activated in the brain and they may interfere with each other. Similar effects are observed in foreign language learners, for example. Another factor is the duality of a communicative goal in translation. Translators are attempt to faithfully represent the content of the source text while making sure that translations are, are properly adopted to the expected target language norm. Striking a balance between these two requirements in translation uh, can be contingent on sociolinguistic factors such as uh, the dominant uh, translation norm are the history of cultural contexts and uh, language prestige. The main, the major translationese trend, uh, which explains most of, trans of translationese, is interference. Um, this is the trend in translation to follow source language. Uh, patterns where possible. The prominence of this trend in translation gave rise to a new line of research in, in translation is studies and in natural language processing, which is focused on source language detection or trans, translation direction detection. Uh, a traditional approach to revealing translationese is based on frequency features such as sentence lengths, frequency of discourse markers, or measures of lexical variety or lexical density. Having characterized translationese studies as a theoretical background for this research, let me explain why we um, undertook this project. Uh, first, there was the lure of a big, well-curated translational corpus, along with the non-translated component available from the Russian national corpus. Second, we were intrigued uh, by the register. Uh, literary translation is rarely selected as data for translationese research. Uh, most of translationese studies are based on uh, parliamentary speeches, uh, informational texts, or official documents, uh, mass media texts, academic or technical writings. Uh, there are definitely no large scale investigations of of uh, translated Russian in this registered list. Um, intuitively, uh, fiction 
should present a certain challenge in translation is detection in translation detection task. First, it is less conventionalized as a register. It allows a more artistic expression and uh, each literary work, each author um, is expected to be unique and defy generalizations. Um, besides, literary translation is uh, viewed as uh, an artistic endeavor of its own right, Translation, translators um, can be less constrained in their linguistic choices and they have uh, can allow a greater freedom of artistic discretion and interpretation. As a result, translations are expected to be more fluent, uh, less dependent on their sources in terms of frequency of linguistic features. Another concern is that parallel corpora are often used as data for um, contrastive studies. Uh, they assume, in contrastive studies, they assume that the translational side of a parallel corpora uh, can be representative of the target language. Um, our findings can undermine this assumption. Oh, finally, if we detect any deviations of, in some language pairs from the expected uh, pattern, uh, it can warrant further research uh, into, into these language pairs from the point of view of critical translation studies to reveal uh, sociolinguistic factors, explanations for, the, for these deviations. In brief, this, trans this research uh, pursues two major goals. First, we are testing whether literary translations into Russian are indeed distinguishable from non-translated Russian for all our source languages involved. Uh, second, we are testing the hypothesis uh, that translations from typologically distant source languages with regard to the target language exhibit more translations than translations from close languages. Uh, this regularity was observed in previous research you know, based on other language pairs and uh, in other registers. In both directions of study, we pay special attention to the translation is indicators, features that capture the distinctions between the respective text categories. I will now move on to the experimental setup. Special attention was uh, paid to creating a reliable research corpus. Uh, we took into account the limitations of previous research, which uh, made the interpretation of our results uh, problematic. Of all the of the entire data available from the Russian national corpus, we selected only the language pairs which had at least six books, uh, counting at least thirty thousand tokens. Uh, we made sure that the sentence lengths are in the selected are texts was within the empirically established range of from 9 to 22 words. Importantly, we uh, used only one work by each author translator combination, and we have no repeating authors or translators. We also excluded works by known bilinguals and translations or which were made by the author, author, author translations. Uh, all translational data comes was produced within the same time period. Um, the text material uh, selected following this criteria was chunked uh, to produce an equal number of same size text fragments for each language. Uh, as a result, each translational or corpus and non-translations are represented by 90 chunks of uh, 
150 consecutive sentences coming from six randomly selected novels. Each chunk counts around 2000 tokens. The textual data, all textual data was annotated with universal dependencies as we rely on this format for feature extraction. Uh, in terms of source languages included into this research corpus, we have translations from, from 11 source languages which can be grouped into four uh, uh, families. Further on, we, uh, for, for the purposes of this research, we grouped them into two big categories according to the proximity of the source language to, the, to Russian as the target language. The first group of typologically distant languages includes uh, six languages from Germanic, Romance, and Uralic families. The second group includes uh, five languages, all from Balta Slavic family. In this type of research, it is no less important to select features than to create a well-motivated, reliable research corpus. In this project, we rely on 45 structural morphosyntactic features to capture uh, translationistic distinctions are uh, between literary translations and non-translated Russian fiction. All of these indicators were previously used in translationist studies uh, on other register, and uh, all of them have uh, are motivated by existing theoretical or empirical evidence. I have arranged a few examples into two groups. Uh, the left-hand column has more or less universal traditional translationist indicators that performed well in a number of studies uh, in a number of language pairs and registers. These include uh, sentence lengths, higher frequencies for discourse markers and pronouns expected in translations. Uh, lower lexical variety and lexical density. The left-hand uh, group of features includes uh, Russian-specific features. The features, the patterns that are expected in, in translations into Russian. Uh, to give one example, of, it is expected that translations into Russian would feature an underuse lower frequency of Russian specific zero subject passive construction. Uh, it is also expected that translations into Russian would have uh, fewer negative particles and would uh, feature an overuse of auxiliary or uh, auxiliaries and modal predicates. Methodologically, this research is based on text classification experiments, feature analysis, and error analysis. All text classifications are based on our support vector machine algorithm. We have we run two or uh, classification experiments. In the first one, uh, we solve a translationist detection task. For each of the 11 translational subcorpora, we train a binary classifier which predicts whether a text is a translation or a non translation. In the other experiment, uh, the other experiment is built around source language detection task. Here we predict the source language of translations or whether a text is a non-translation originally written in Russian. Uh, it, given the nature of our corpus, it was important to, to set up uh, the evaluation study um, in a reliable way. Our evaluation is based on cross-validation approach. Uh, the corpus we're using 
it has many observations, many chunks of texts coming from um, the same, from a few books. It is easier for, it is easy, it can be easy for a classifier to or predict a chunk from a book that it has already seen in training. That is why we are made sure that uh, no book appears both in the training set and in the test set. Uh, in each of the cross-validation folds, we train on, on 10 books and test on two unseen books. For feature analysis, we rely on three methods. First, we use the standard feature selection approach uh, to reveal features that are um, that have statistically significant differences uh, in texts coming from different classes. Uh, second, we perform um, an ablation study which are, aims to find the size and the membership of the best performing feature set. Uh, finally, we look into feature weights returned by the support vector machine linear kernel and which indicate uh, which uh, bring up features that are that were more important than others for predicting uh, this or that uh, class of texts. Error analysis, um, oh, well, the multi-class uh, scenario is mostly uh, used it to look into the statistics of misclassifications. We use confusion matrix and count the number and direction of misclassifications to demonstrate how our transla translational specificity is dependent on the typology of the source language. This slide has the results for the 11 binary classifiers. They are grouped grouped according to the distance between the source language and Russian used as the target language in this project. It can be seen that the accuracies for any of the translational or subcorpora uh, are higher than the expected chance level. In each classification, we had a perfect balance between classes, therefore the accuracy uh, level for chance classifier is 50%. It looks like translations from distant languages are indeed uh, more easy to distinguish from non-translations than uh, transla translations from typologically close languages. The accuracies for translations in the first group um, exceed 70%, while the second group, uh, the, the highest value, accuracy value in the second group is uh, 67%. The two bold exceptions from this um, observation is uh, French and Bulgarian. They seem to be, their results seem to be at odds with their respective groups. Um, the multi-class classification results are, are also higher, much higher than the chance level. It is, interesting to note that the best um, classification results in terms of uh, F score is seen for the Russian class. It can be partially explained by the higher, by the uh, relatively high recall um, values. As can be seen from the error network graph on the left in this slide, the Russian class attracts um, a lot of misclassifications from um, Belarusian, Bulgarian, and Polish. 
translations from these languages are most often predicted as Russian non-translations. On the other hand, uh, the clean horizontal line against the Russian clause in the confusion matrix here on the right indicate that hardly any true Russian text is misclassified as a translation. The pictures in this slide also indicate that um, this the number and the direction of errors in a multi-class uh, classification group or translations of from source languages according to their typological families the top right area in this graph is occupied by closed slavic languages uh, romance languages are found in the lower left area in this graph, while Germanic languages are seen uh, uh, in the top right uh, part of the graph. It means that uh, translations from typologically similar languages share some translationese properties. This slide aggregates the results from feature analysis. By intersecting the lists of top translationese predictors for all languages, we were able to reveal a set of uh, more or less universal translationese features. These include adversative markers, words such as nonetheless, however, um, on the contrary, um, higher frequencies for adverbial and relative clauses and demonstrative pronouns. This project demonstrated that our feature set might miss the specificity of translations from languages other than Germanic, specifically, our translation, uh, uh, translations from Romance languages seem to rely on just one translation is feature uh, to achieve the best classification results, while the rest of the feature set uh, is uh, effectively noise, which decreases classification results. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we were able to find uh, subsets of features that are associated uh, with uh, translation is properties for specific language families. They were features that are thrown up as translation is predictors for translations from Germanic languages and then, for example, and they are not seen in lists for Romance or Slavic languages. For Germanic languages, for translations from Germanic languages, these features include, for example, uh, the overuse of modal predicates and epistemic markers. Uh, translations from the Romance languages into Russian feature higher lexical density, uh, more infinitives, and uh, higher frequencies of the verbal nouns. Oh, this research also demonstrates that uh, translationese indicators are, are not only uh, language pair specific, uh, but also register specific. This is especially clear in case of lexical density, uh, which was consistently found um, higher in Russian literary translations than in the comparable non-translations. It runs or uh, it contradicts the findings from a, a, a number of other research on into translationese, but most of those studies were based on other registers than fiction. Some typical predictors of translationese 
such as frequencies of copula verbs or lexical type to token ratio or the frequencies of passive voice auxiliaries uh, specific to Russian um, do not have, do not, uh, were not useful in this register. Um, finally, we have we were able to identify features that are specific for the non-translated class in our class in our setup. It seems like uh, originally also Russian literature has higher frequencies of simple and interrogative sentences, uh, while it does not use modal predicates as much. Oh, Russian non-translated uh, texts have more passive tense forms. Uh, some of the features specific for Russian non-translations are relevant, are relative to, to the type of translation. For example, when comparing with translations from close Slavic languages, Russian non-translations have more clausal complements, uh, while in comparison with um, distant languages, this number seems to be um, smaller than in translations. Summing up this research, I would, I would like to draw your attention to a few important findings. First, we can confirm that all translations are distinct from originally authored texts, even in uh, high quality fiction. However, the scale of the differences between translations and non-translations is dependent on the source language. Typologically distant languages returned higher translationese classification accuracy, over 70%, while typologically close languages are more difficult to distinguish from non-translations. Uh, translations from the same family source languages are more often confused uh, with each other and um, share, which indicates that they share translationese properties and they also share, they share, have longer lists of intersecting translationese indicators. Uh, each uh, translated book has its own unique and learnable uh, structural peculiarities, which motivates, um, which requires special attention in the design of the evaluation setup. Although we have seen some universal translationese predictors, translationese indicators, uh, they are not necessarily the most effective ones for each language pair. So our conclusion is that <clears throat> there is no effective universal subset of translation is features and uh, a, la a language independent set of count based features can de actually degrade classification results for some language pairs and for some registers. Uh, the factor of register in, in a translation is classification seem to be important too. Uh, some translation is uh, features um, behave differently in uh, fiction than in other registers. <coughs> we are aware of some of the limitations um, in this research setup. Uh, most importantly, the collinearity of features uh, might have been a problem. Then um, we are worried that the feature set that was tuned to capture translation is in, in Germanic languages um, might have returned, might have affected the, the outcomes of this research. And then admittedly, we have um, small experimental data and uh, a large uh, features uh, feature set, which can be an issue. <coughs> it is frustrating that the differences, the statistical differences that we observe 
are usually um, small, although statistically significant, and they're hardly visible um, with the naked eye, and they're difficult to um, verify uh, by human evaluation, by human interpretation. As for the future plans, it is obvious that a more creative approach is required uh, to represent text in this sort of research, uh, a better approach to feature selection. Uh, then uh, we want to look into the curious cases of French and Bulgarian translations, maybe from the point of view of our, of our critical translation studies. Um, um, we think this deserves attention. Uh, then we uh, we look forward uh, to collaborations with um, people from contrastive linguistics uh, who might be able to shed light on on our findings from the contrastive point of view and uh, actually employ uh, the parallel component of the corpus um, to explain uh, some of the results in this research. Uh, this concludes uh, my talk today. Uh, thank you for your time and attention and I'm looking forward to your questions in the November Q&A session at the conference. Thank you.